This is the second video in the series for section 12c and in this video I'm going to work through two examples of Hamilton's method and these two examples are in your PowerPoint. I believe they start around slide 15 or so. So our first example, we're going to see how do we apply Hamilton's method to our made up country with four different states, A, B, C, and D. And in Hamilton's method, what we do is we find the standard divisor and then the standard quota. And once we have the standard quotas, we'll find the minimum quotas for the state, the minimum number of people they should get if everything is done fairly. And then we'll see what do we do if we still have leftover seats. All right, so first of all, we have our four states with our population. And I'm going to start by finding the total population for all four states. So I'm going to sum my people, sum all of my states to see that this country has 10,000 people. So to find our standard divisor, I'm going to take my total population, my 10,000 people, and divide it by the 100 representatives that we're going to have. So our standard divisor is 100. There should be 100 voters per person in the legislature. So then to find my standard quota, I'm going to take my population of a state and divide it by the standard divisor. I'm going to drag that down to fill in all four states. So we see the standard quota, which if everything was done fairly and we could have fractional people, this is how many people or how many re representatives each state should get. And as we know, we can't split a person in half. So we're going to start by finding the minimum quota as a way to get around this. So the minimum quota is just the standard quota for each state rounded down. So 9.36 rounded down is 9. And we'll get 27, 26, and 37. So this is the minimum quota. It's the fewest number of representatives that a state should have, period. But look what happens. If we sum up our minimum quotas, this is only splitting up 99 of the 100 representatives. We still have one more person. So we've got to figure out which state is worthy or which state deserves having one more representative than its minimum quota. And what Hamilton's method tells us to do is to give any extra seats to the states with the highest decimals. So if you look at our standard quota, our decimals are 0 0.36, 0 0.26, 0 0.03, and 0.35. The biggest one is state A with 0.36. So Hamilton's method says give the extra seat to state A and then the rest of them get their minimum quota. And now if we sum up all of our apportioned seats, we have divvied up all 100. So this is an example of Hamilton's method. Our minimum quotas created only 99 representatives. We needed 100. So we add one person to the state with the highest decimal value, which is state A, to divvy up all 100 people. Let's look at a similar example. Different, or same country, same four states, but now we're going to have 101 representatives rather than 100. So again, I'm going to find my total population by summing up the states. And then I'm going to find my standard divisor by taking the 10,000 people that we have and dividing it by the 101 representatives. And then to find my standard quota, I'm going to take each state's population and divide it by my standard divisor. And I hit F4 to what's called lock in that standard divisor cell. You see it put dollar signs in front of the cell references. And that's because when I drag down, I don't want it to change the number for my standard divisor. I want it to leave it alone. So if you click on a cell and then hit F4, it locks it in and puts in those dollar signs. So as I drag down, it will do each state's population divided by that same number. So I'm going to drag down to get my standard quotas. And then the minimum quota tells us the fewest number of people that need to represent that state. And now if we sum up the minimum quotas, we see we've only split up, or we've only apportioned out 99 seats, and we have 101. So this time we're going to give an extra seat to the two states with the highest decimals. It looks like our highest decimals belong to state D, so they'll get an extra seat. And then state B, and they'll get an extra seat. And then the rest of them stay where they are. And now if I sum up my apportioned seats, I've split, out, split up all 101. But this gets us an interesting situation. This is actually called 
the Alabama paradox. And the Alabama paradox occurs when a country or when the overall number of a seat, number of seats increases. So we went from 100 to 101 available seats, but even with the extra seats, one of the country actually loses representatives. You see how in example one, state A had 10, but in example two, state A only ended up with nine. And this doesn't make sense because if there are more seats, you would think that would benefit states, it wouldn't take away from states. So that's why it's a paradox. It's something that doesn't really make sense, but it happens. So this is an example of Alabama's paradox, where when we added a representative, it actually decreased the representation in state A. So this is the end of my examples for Hamilton method. On my next video, we're going to move on to Jefferson's method.